Greetings, everyone. Uh, first of all, uh, let me start uh, with a very quick introduction of mine. I'm really into offensive security. So if you would like to follow some of my researches, you can find it here. And uh, I'm also a co-organizer of a meetup in Hungary. I'm uh, the program committee member at the Hacktivity Conference, and I am a volunteer at IoT Village. Uh, I have to say that uh, I really love Singapore. This is my first time being here, and uh, I am really happy that uh, I have been invited to this conference. And uh, this is just a really amazing place, I have to tell you. So I, I really, really love it. Uh, now, let's talk about uh, what I will do here and why I'm doing this. Uh, so actually, this is a two-hour presentation compressed into 25 minutes. So fasten your seal belts. I'm sorry for that. Uh, why I'm doing this? Uh, I always love playing with new technologies, and I really find blockchain and web free fascinating. Uh, I really do believe that it has a f uh, future, uh, but we are not there yet, as you will see very soon. So this presentation is not about that the whole cryptocurrency world is a scam. It's not uh, for smart contract developers. It is not a financial advice on which coin you should invest into. It's not about crypto exchange hacks, like uh, you have seen uh, some examples from yesterday from David Six's presentation. So you should check out that one. And uh, the whole scam uh, and whole presentation, uh, it's not about uh, topics where uh, cryptocurrency is used as a form of payment, for example, ransomware. All right, so how did we get here? A uh, lot of people got rich from cryptocurrencies, that's for sure. And a lot of people want to get rich from cryptocurrencies. And the total market capitalization is around one trillion US dollars right now. When I first made the slides, it was two trillion dollars, but that's it. Uh, that's written in the, with all the zeros, so it's a lot of money. I don't know how much that is, but it's a lot. Uh, and actually, it turns out that it is a very new, complex technology, and it has very crappy user interface. So what could possibly go wrong, right? I have created uh, this animation whenever scammers are trying to figure out what's next, what should be our next scans, what should we do. Should it be a Walmart scam? No. Shall we send some adult content spam to the users? No, that's boring. T-Mobile scam? No one cares about that. UPS package delivery scam? Who cares? Oh. Let's invite the user on Discord to mint some NFTs. That's hot, right? You can get a lot of money from that. Let's like this one. All right. Uh, I'm pretty sure everyone knows Bitcoin and what it is, uh, but you have not heard uh, Bitcoin and blockchain explained uh, like uh, this lady did, and uh, she's a free Grammy Award winner and she knows a lot about uh, blockchains. So let's hear about her opinion on what Bitcoin really is. A message from Cash App and the CEO of Hot Girl Enterprise, Megan The Stallion. Hey hotties, let's talk about Bitcoin. It's the new digital currency that's been getting a lot of hype. Bitcoin is a new kind of money. While the cash in your wallet is issued and regulated by governments, Bitcoin is a cryptocurrency. Like a wild stallion, it can't be controlled by anyone. That means that no one person or organization gets to decide how much of it is used, how much of it is in circulation, or what it's worth. Okay, so boom. There's only a limited amount of Bitcoin, like gold, silver, or me. Its scarcity and security is what can make Bitcoin valuable. Every Bitcoin is unique and has its own ID that is certified by a super secure technology called the blockchain. You can't make a fake Bitcoin no matter how hard you try. Like gold or gas prices, Bitcoin's value can go up and down as the demand changes. 
Although there's some other nitty gritty stuff that factors in too. That means when people are selling, the price goes down. But when lots of people are buying it, it climbs back up. Bitcoin is not hard to get. You just gotta know how. You can get it from another person or from special markets called cryptocurrency exchanges. You can also easily buy it on Cash App, starting with as low as $1 worth. Bitcoin is an investment, so you can lose money. The price can go up and down by the hour. But the more you educate yourself on Bitcoin, the better equipped you'll be to navigate those curves. That's all for now. But with my knowledge and your hustle, you'll have your own empire in no time. I'll see you at the top. So what I really love about this uh, video is the number of lawyer hours uh, they did put into this video. Like it, it's not like the original scans where they promise you everything. They d did really tell you that, hey, you can lose money on Bitcoin. So at least uh, she was not uh, stupid to uh, not involve lawyers into something like this. Anyway. Um, I also want to introduce you to a new measurement system uh, I invented for this whole the free world, and it's called the Lambometer. And uh, you can see a pile of Lamborghinis, and uh, based on the height of the pile, uh, I want to measure how successful the different web free scams are, and uh, how much money someone can make from these scams. The higher the pile, the better, right? So, um, the different, talking about the different type of scams in, uh, the web free world and cryptocurrencies, uh, most of you probably know pump and dump. Uh, it's very easy scheme. Uh, buy a lot from something which is cheap and it has a very low trading volume. Advertise this as the next big thing. Sell it on top. Profit. Easy game, right? Uh, if it's possible, you can sometimes even short when you are on top and make double money. It's really cool. Um, if you are a celebrity, uh, you can do this once or twice, but after the third time, probably no one will believe you that this is the next big thing. Rock pools. Rock pools are pretty similar to pump and dump, but the difference is that here you are the owner or the developer of the specific cryptocurrency or token or whatever we call this. And uh, by being the developer, uh, you can control more things. And um, for example, here's this very nice chart of a typical rug pool. Um, there was this uh, series called Squid Game, you probably know this. And uh, when it uh, got popular, there was a, a token called Squid Game token, and it got pumped pretty high then it was dumped uh, very shortly. And uh, people made a lot of money from it, others lost a lot more. Um, and what was really interesting that uh, there was this uh, Conti leaks, where the Conti ransomware group uh, was uh, talking about things, and even they knew about this uh, rug pool scheme, so that was interesting in those chats. But again, uh, you need some identity, to promote something, um, I'm, I'm not really sure that uh, this is going to scale for a while. Giveaway scams. Uh, Twitter accounts uh, are hacked all the time, and uh, also uh, some people are spamming uh, popular Twitter accounts with uh, different spam messages. It usually goes like, hey, send Bitcoin to this address, and I will send you back twice the Bitcoins. Sounds legit, right? Uh, there's a tons of these. Here you can see from Elon Musk scams. Actually, back in the day, someone did uh, like 2.8 bitcoins from this very specific scam. Depends on when the cash out was. It can be okay or not, not that cool. Uh, sometimes, uh, as I mentioned, uh, Twitter accounts are hacked. For example, this is the official target account. Uh, doing the same giveaway scam. Um, yeah, you cannot trust uh, trusted accounts anymore on the internet. Advanced fee fraud. Um, this is one of my favorites. Uh, I actually received uh, an email like this and uh, 
like I got it uh, for my main email address. I instantly knew that this is a scam, so I wanted to investigate. And uh, this is how it looks like that, hello, uh, your Bitcoin wallet has been founded with some Bitcoin. Uh, you can go to this website, use this username and use this password, and you can get your Bitcoins. Uh, while registering, uh, they also asked for my phone number to set up two-factor authentication. Um, that was, I think, both for the purpose of making the site more legit and getting my text, no my phone number so can scam me later. And once you log in, uh, you can see a fake transaction history and fake bonds. And when you want to withdraw uh, your money, uh, they will tell you that uh, just a very small amount of uh, bitcoins are missing before you can withdraw from this website. So if you fall for this scam, then you send a little bit of Bitcoin to the website and you believe that after that you can withdraw all of your Bitcoins and you can going to be rich. Spoiler alert, you won't. So uh, let's uh, talk about NFTs a little bit. I'm pretty sure most of you guys already know uh, what an NFT is. So... No? Yeah, let's start this. Come on. Okay, uh, so this is the first and practically only NFT I bought. Uh, I bought this like more than four years ago. Uh, I bought it for one dollar. I believe it has the same value as of today, so I did not get rich from this. Uh, but uh, I really don't want to sell this. Um, anyway, um, Right now, Twitter allows you to link uh, your NFT to your profile image, and uh, people think this is cool. And uh, so whenever you visit my Twitter profile, you can see all the properties of this very ugly kitty. Uh, the reason I chose this crypto kitty when I bought it, because this was the cheapest one and probably the ugliest one. Anyway, um, as you can see, it has some very interesting properties like uh, uh, mouth is gerbil, pattern jaguar, uh, fur is Himalayan, I don't know, I don't care, whatever. Let's see what's on the blockchain, right? So if we use Ether scan to check uh, how this uh, NFT looks like, here you can see that uh, I am the owner, uh, this is my wallet address, um, you can see which smart contract created this NFT. Um, and here is the token ID. The token ID is very important. This is practically most of the time what you buy as an NFT. From a smart contract, you buy a number. That's the basics of NFT. And uh, you should be really careful whenever you buy something that sometimes this is only what you buy. So let's see the transaction uh, when I bought this, what happened in the background. So as you can see, um, the birth function was called uh, for this kitty and uh, then uh, the transfer fr function which uh, transferred the NFT from the website, from uh, the creator smart contract account into my account. And as you can see, now I'm the proud owner of this number. So what's interesting uh, with CryptoKit is that uh, because it's a very old uh, NFT, uh, they did not store the images on the blockchain. And um, as of today, no one practically stores the NFT images on the blockchain because it's very expensive. Uh, but uh, what happens, for example, in the case of CryptoKitties, that uh, there is this very long number which practically defines all the characteristics of the CryptoKitty, and uh, they have a smart contract which can uh, practically decode these numbers and say that, okay, if this bit is uh, set to this number, then this means that it has the Himalayan fur or whatever. Uh, unfortunately, I won't have too much time to discuss about IPFS, but uh, if you are interested, I think uh, IPFS is a 
really cool technology where you can store files uh, in a peer-to-peer -peer way. And um, nowadays, most modern NFTs, they store uh, the URL of your NFT picture, and this URL points to an IPFS uh, storage, and uh, I think that's the best what we can do right now. But unfortunately, there are still sometimes a lot of NFT projects where the you where the image uh, is only stored on a Google Drive or something like that, and on the blockchain you can only see the Google Drive link. So that's not uh, the best way to do NFTs. Okay, so let's go back to this. Um, Quick uh, game. Uh, what do you think? Who bought this NFT? Who's the proud owner of this? S say that again. No, almost. I can help you. Uh, she created this NFT about herself. Yes. So it's Paris Hilton, and she bought it for almost 120 Ethereum. Last time I checked, one Ethereum was like 1,700 US dollars. Who is the proud owner of this one? It's Justin Bieber. He bought it for 500 Ethereum. You can calculate how much money that is. Actually, I like this art. I, I think it's pretty cool. What, what do you think? Who is the proud owner of this NFT? It's Snoop Dogg, and he bought it for 2,500 Ethereums. So that's a lot of money. I mean, for art, it's... I don't know. Anyway. And who is this? Last one. Last monkey. Say that again. Yes. It's Eminem. He only uh, spent 123 fares on that. All right. Now, uh, there are also rug pulls in the NFT projects, and uh, this is one of my main, uh, uh, my favorite story about rug pulls in NFT projects. Um, there's this actress called uh, Lana Rhodes, and uh, she created an NFT project as well called Cryptosis. And uh, unfortunately, uh, after a while, uh, she got uh, aggressive comments on Discord and um, she practically canceled the project. And uh, for example, here you can see that someone bought this very beautiful art for uh, $4,000. Uh, and now what he's saying on Discord, that he practically spent all of his money on this uh, uh, NFT and uh, he has no job and has a two-year-old son. Yeah, probably not the best investment. And uh, this is a bit another story like to the same NFT project, but this is not the same guy. Um, and uh, someone is begging Lana for a free NFT. And uh, because she just recently had a new child, then uh, she tells that yo diapers are also expensive. So I'm not giving away my precious NFTs. So what's really bad about this story that uh, she had this roadmap and uh, she was promising uh, a hell of a lot of things like uh, uh, um, some merch signed uh, by herself and sent uh, to the top holders and stuff like that. And uh, because uh, she had this roadmap and she never fulfilled this, uh, she might get sued actually for this because she was promising something to investors which she did not deliver. Okay. Um, and then let's go to my main uh, NFT scam. Uh, this whole story started that I was checking Discord and uh, someone was complaining on Discord that uh, he or she got across a new NFT scam. And uh, I was able to see the link for this scam, so I quickly started to investigate this scam. 
If you go to the website, uh, it promises you that you can get some free doodles, which is another uh, very famous NFT project. And uh, once you connect your wallet uh, to the website, uh, in the background, if you analyze the traffic, you can see that uh, the website will check uh, all of your NFTs you store in the same wallet, and uh, it will check the prices of these NFTs. Kind of suspicious, right? And uh, what will happen if you click on, hey, I want to get this NFT for free, then uh, MetaMask will prompt you with uh, this uh, window where you can either confirm uh, the transaction or reject it. Uh, I myself, I'm an IT security guy. I know that, I knew already that this is a scam, but it took me some minutes to figure out what is going on here. And um, what's really interesting to see that the source uh, of the transaction is my wallet, my NFTs, and the destination, um, I mean, the when, whenever you uh, do something on Web3, you are calling functions on smart contracts. And if you want to give your NFT to someone else, you have to call uh, the smart contract and you have to call a function on that smart contract which created that NFT, right? Um, so whenever someone wants to steal your NFTs, uh, they will ask you to uh, send a function call to a known trusted smart contract. And I find it a bit confusing that someone is coming you but still you are interacting with a known legitimate smart contract. Uh, this can be actually pretty bad. For example, let's say you are only into the doodles NFTs. You have whitelisted uh, the uh, smart contract uh, for the doodles NFTs, and then you want to mint some new doodles NFTs. And when you click on mint, you will see, hey, I'm in interacting with this trusted uh, smart contract, right? So what could possibly go wrong? What could possibly go wrong that you are calling the safe transfer from function and not the mint function, which means that you are giving away all your precious NFTs. So uh, at the moment, most of the wallet software, they have this pretty bad UI that it is very hard to decipher what is going on. And if you are in a hurry, then yeah, bad luck, you can lose all of your NFTs. So I dig more. And uh, I found uh, that this whole uh, scam kit was available on GitHub. And uh, I was checking some of these uh, very vaguely uh, encoded contents. And I found that uh, someone is not just uh, giving away this scam kit on GitHub for free, but he is also selling it on a uh, on online platform. And uh, here you can see all the reviews he got from his scam kit. For example, best trainer, one Azuki in three days. So, uh, seems like a lot of people started to use this scam kit. Um, these are all the features it uh, supports. So, I was digging around a bit more, and uh, I found some heavily obfuscated uh, content as well. Uh, this is the decrypted version of it. And uh, what's interesting to see here is that uh, on the first row you can see price. Then it compares the price, whether it is more than 1.1, which is Ether. And then there's this address, which is uh, a new address. And practically what happens here that this is a backdoor code in the NFT scam kit. And the uh, scam kit, it will uh, steal all the cheap NFTs and it will transfer all the cheap NFTs to the operator of the scam kit, whoever downloaded it from the internet. But all the precious or more valuable NFTs, 
they will be transferred to the guy who created originally the scam kit. So I found this uh, very interesting and amazing, and I have found a lot of examples on the blockchain that this is exactly what happened, that uh, some NFTs were transferred to one address, and the more precious ones, they were transferred to another one. So I contacted this guy on Telegram, uh, and I asked him uh, what are the differences between the free version on GitHub and the paid version you can buy on Salix. Um, and I also asked him about this obfuscated code, uh, but he practically did not bite, so he didn't tell me that, yeah, the obfuscated version is a backdoored one. Uh, he just tells me that the paid version has some extra features included, like you can uh, steal um, Ethereum as well with it. So, yeah. I think this is how you make big money, because this scales. Now, let's see it in action. So let's, uh, we are on the scam site. Let's connect our MetaMask account. And now the user wants to click on Mint NFT. Uh, this signature, it's not really important. We can forget about this one. And when I clicked on Claim Now, uh, this is uh, the default view of MetaMask, what happens here. And if you really know your stuff and you know what you are doing, uh, you should be able to see that the safe transfer from function is not what you want to call if you want to mint a new NFT. But if you are not very familiar with this, you might think, hey, I'm getting free NFTs, so let's go ahead. So we can also check the data part of MetaMask. And uh, again, here, you, here it tells you that... Uh, this is a trusted smart contract you are interacting with. You can also see all the debug uh, messages, stuff like that. But uh, unfortunately, I was only able to record this with a real NFT in my um, wallet. So um, I had to click reject because otherwise I would give away my precious $1 NFT, and I did not want to do that. Okay. Um, Discord scam, uh, this is pretty wide nowadays, and uh, this is not just about uh, fake accounts um, contacting you and telling you to do this or that, but uh, nowadays Discord servers are hacked uh, all the time, and uh, for example, this is a list uh, created by NFT Herder uh, where he listed uh, 107 Discord servers which have been compromised, uh, mostly, most of them with this bookmarklet technique. And um, after you can compromise official Discord servers, you can send uh, announcements in the public channels and people will think, hey, this is a trusted source. This is the official Discord server for the NFT project. So whatever I do on this website, that's legit, right? So yeah, Discord security is very, very bad nowadays. Uh, I really like this one about uh, how hacking happens in movies and what really happens in the NFT world because yes, this is what happening most of the time when it comes to scams. Uh, I only have like one minute left, so I won't discuss so much about uh, hardware wallets, but uh, hardware wallets are also a target for attackers. Uh, sometimes they can ch uh, change, for example, uh, they open the hardware wallet, set it up, uh, they know already the recovery uh, seed phrase, then write it down and send it to you that, hey, this is your... Um, Seed phrase, use this one. And uh, here's another example where someone modified the uh, ledger hardware itself.
and it added an extra flash drive to it and sent it to uh, already on, uh, owners who already had Ledger. So these are the best practices you can do. Don't trust random people or celebrities or media. Uh, always check the source of the application or the uh, distributed app you are using. Don't send funds someone you don't trust, clearly. Um, whenever one wants to share logins, passwords, private keys, seed phrases, backup phrases with you or asking for you to do that, block them. Um, be extra careful whenever you interact with both known and unknown smart contracts. Uh, you should probably use a password manager, enable 2FA. Uh, if you have a lot to protect, really use hardware wallets because sometimes it can help you, sometimes it can't. Surely keep your PC malware free. Um, you can also use cold wallets. Uh, I think the take time, don't rush. That's the most important advice I can tell you. Never rush whenever signing transactions on the blockchain. And uh, nowadays uh, there are even uh, some security extensions you can use like Wallet Guard or Sunrise NFT Scan Protector. I have never tried them, but they look legit. So this is the conclusion. Uh, give a man a zero day and he will access for a day, but teach a man to fish and he will access for life. This is very true for the NFT world. Uh, I also have a white paper uh, where I discuss another like 30 different scam types uh, regarding the blockchain and web free world. So uh, contact me if you are interested in those. And thank you, that's all I wanted to share with you. Thank you for your attention. All right, thank you. Uh, I really like the memes in the presentation today. <laughs> so, uh, may I know who asked the first question uh, with all these scams? Can you raise your hand? Yeah, so you got the most top voted question, so please proceed to Gwokan in the back. Uh, our staff there, he will pass you a cap. All right, thank you. So, we have some time for some questions. So first, with all these scams in Web3, what do you think is the best way to educate the layman? Don't rush. <laughs> I mean, that's the best advice, but how I can tell to everyone who's in the NFT world, which is already crazy enough, I don't know. Like, there's no easy answer to this, unfortunately. There, there's no best way to reach people who are sometimes greedy, sometimes stupid. I don't know. There's no easy answer to this. Okay, next question. What is the best way to prevent these scams by the community or online platforms? I think as of today, uh, the wallet software developers uh, should improve a lot. Like, uh, there is this term called clear signing. Uh, what you have seen previously is called blind signing, where you don't really know what's going on. And the clear signing design uh, should look like that. Hey, do you want to transfer this Doodle NFT from your wallet to this unknown someone? Are you interested in that? If yes, please confirm. That's that's a clear signing, but uh, only very few uh, wallet software are uh, supporting it. Some are already supporting it for tokens, like ERC20 tokens, but for NFTs, I don't think anyone is there yet where they can really know that this is going to happen. All right, I think we have a minute for the last question. So do you think that there's a need for the government's intervention when it comes to regulating Web3? If the government steps in, wouldn't it be counterintuitive to what Web3 stands for? Uh, yes and no. <laughs> like, uh, if we really want uh, crypto to be, cryptocurrencies and blockchain and Web3 to be mainstream, yes, government should step in. Uh, unfortunately, governments are not very famous for regulating stuff uh, best ways. So I think in the beginning there will be some crazy stupid regulations, but I do hope that in time we will get there when everything can, everyone can be happy. All right. Thank you very much, Zoltan. So let's give him a round of applause.